Well, good morning. Yes, it's 1.11 a.m. And this is the video for the 19th of September. 1.11 was when I started doing videos. Now you can say the 1st of January, I mean the 11th of January, or the uh, or January 11th, but it's still 1.11. 2011. That's when I started making videos. And it wasn't before that month had ended, I had committed myself to making a video every day, which has gone on ever since. The title of today's talk is Ron Talks About Dragon Family Spiritual Warriors. And I'm going to make my blurb be a quote from Jeff Brown. And I have no idea who Jeff Brown is. But somewhere I got this quotation. And he wrote, The path of the spiritual warrior is not soft and sweet. It is not artificially blissful and pretend forgiving. It is not fearful of divisiveness. It is not afraid of its own shadow. It is not afraid of losing popularity when it speaks its truth. It will not bear, beat around the bush where directness is essential. It has no regard for vested interests that cause suffering. It is benevolent and it is fiery and it is cuttingly honest in its efforts to liberate itself and humanity from the egoic ties that bind. Shunning strong opinions in the name of spirituality is anti-spiritual. Spirituality that is only floaty soft is a recipe for disaster, allowing all manner of manipulation to run amok. Real spirituality is a quest for truth in all its forms. Sometimes we find the truth on the meditation cushion, and sometimes we find it in the heart of conflict. May all spiritual warriors rise into fullness. This planet is lost without them. Jeff, you did an excellent job of giving a brief overview of what a spiritual warrior is, and I thank you for that. And I also thank the Red Dragon, who is leading Bible study groups, I'm going to call it that, with people in various parts of the world with the intention of helping spiritual warriors rise up into fullness. Now he's doing it using biblical interpretations that would be considered charismatic or Pentecostal in nature. Put on the full armor of Christ the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, and I think, I don't remember all of them, though those are ones that come to my mind immediately because I was raised at, in the same genre of spiritual understanding as the red dragon is currently at. Now, I moved somewhat beyond that in my own training, which makes, makes, the Bible classes somewhat difficult for me because they push buttons because I don't believe that becoming a Christian is the only way to be saved because I believe that Christ is in everybody and it has nothing to do with Christianity it has to do with the essence of who we are as human beings I don't believe that there was ever a time or a place where God did not exist in all of God's fullness. I do believe that there were times and places that we were not aware of God at all, let alone fullness. And so the only thing that changed was not God, but it was our understanding of God, our perception of God, the image that we created for ourselves to pretend that we could know God, which in a sense, God is unknowable. Perhaps God will always be unknowable. I don't know. 
I don't know the answer to that. I'm in the middle of this con conflagration that's going on on the planet right now, where the old forces are trying to convince you that if that when they win, there will be a new world order. Well, no, they will just be the old world order worse. <laughs> the real new world order is that which is being waged by people like the Red Dragon, the spiritual warriors in high places and in low places, because there are no places, <laughs> in a sense, if you get my drift. Place is a finite description or definition of something. It's actually everywhere, present and always present. It's everywhere. God is everywhere in everything. Therefore, when we ask for God's presence in our lives, well, God's presence is always in our lives, whether we ask or not, as I see it. If God is everywhere, how can how can he not be there? All that, all that changes is us, our perception of knowing that we're connected as opposed to not believing that we're connected, is all that really changes. The reality of the interconnectedness of all life never changes, regardless of belief or unbelief, regardless of religion or non-religion, regardless of anything. What the red dragon is doing, now bear in mind, he was a Buddhist. I don't know how much he practiced his Buddhism, but he had a personal encounter, a miraculous encounter, you might say. Christ appearing to him when he's in the morgue. And I don't mean he's in the morgue looking at bodies. I mean, he's one of the bodies. His body is one of the bodies in the morgue. Now, that's got to be an, be an impactful thing. And so I can respect and honor the red dragon in what he's trying to do. He's trying to bring people to a level of consciousness where they understand that God's intention is for each of us to be gifted, for each of us to become more Christ-like, if you will, more divine in our appreciation and understanding of life, more loving, more compassionate, more forgiving, but not pretend forgiving. Forgiving like the people in Rwanda who were able to go back and actually love the people that killed their family. That's forgiving. Not the pretend kind that pretends there was no there was nothing done that was wrong. See, that's what the new the new age movement and the new a lot of the new stuff, the new religion, the new spirituality is a reality, or it's a non-reality that just says reality is an illusion. Physical reality is an illusion, and therefore I don't have to put any energy into it. It just doesn't exist. I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist. It's spirituality by denial, by avoidance. And that's not spirituality at all. It's not a, it's a, that's the one that Jeff Brown called the floaty, soft kind of spirituality is a recipe for disaster. If everyone were to adopt that, the world would be destroyed. Humanity would cease to exist, or, or at least go back to the Stone Age. It just would not be able to carry on at all. There would be no heaven on earth. There would be ignorance on earth. We would go back, as I said, to a, an age of of unenlightenment. I've been trying to stand in the middle and I see the red dragon is standing in the middle. He battles on a daily basis people that want to rule the world. And some would say so does the dragon family want to rule the world. And that's the chance that I take because they admit the ambassador admits that they have been paying the cabal for a long time, financing wars for a long time. They've controlled the wealth for a long time. Not the 
Rothschilds, not the Rockefellers, not the Western Cabal or the Illuminati, but the Dragon family from the East, from China. Yeah. Do I buy that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Why do I buy it? People tell me, Ron, the ambassador is conning you. I've had people in my own family tell me that, close friends that tell me that. I'm the one that spends time with him, day in and day out. I'm the one that interacts with him, sometimes more than two hours in a day, sometimes three or four hours in a day. I'm interacting with this man. I'm listening to his stories that he shares. I'm listening to what he tells me about his interactions with people around the world, some of them in very high places. Is he conning me? Well, there are things that move so slowly that sometimes I wonder. Honestly, I do. I wonder. But then he'd be creating such an elaborate con because it's not just him. There's a whole network of people that are also involved that are recognizing who the ambassador is, that have dealt with him longer than I have. Other people of the family, the historian, the red dragon, as I've already mentioned and other people that have known him less long. But there's something about what he's saying that resonates with me. He's a warrior. Not only is he a martial artist warrior, well-trained in the martial arts, he's well-trained in religion. He's well-trained in scriptures. He's well-trained in diplomacy and dealing with people at various levels. He has a craft of being a diplomat. He's very diplomatic in the way that he handles it. He tells me the Red Dragon is not quite as diplomatic as he is. And the Red Dragon is the Red Dragon. The Ambassador is the Red is the Ambassador. Ron is Ron. I'm going to continue to be Ron. I'm standing in the middle of this confluence of information, of ideas, of actions of goals and visions. I'm standing in the middle of it, trying to make sense of it, trying to feel my way through it, because I'm a spiritual warrior. Sometimes I'm going to be talking about the spiritual aspects, and then I'm going to have people really, really like that and say, Ron, it's good that you're finally getting out of your ego and you're getting back to your spirit. And they think that that's wonderful. And I'll have other people with the same message that will say, you got to be active. What are you doing? You're laying down on the job. You're being wishy-washy. And so I, I get one group of people that are very supportive of the message and another group of people with the same message that are not supportive. And then I do it the other way around. I start calling for action. And I get the people that are activity prone, that, that realize that we have to do something in this world. Not just pretend, not just work on ourselves, but we have to be, uh, we have, we have to be involved in the world around us. And those people support that message because it's talking about the political necessities of dealing with issues in our world. And then I get the people criticizing from the other side and saying you're in your you're you're in your ego mind. You gotta get back to your center, you gotta get back to the spirit again. Do you do you see do you see the place that the spiritual warrior is in? He's displeasing and pleasing people with everything that he does. Can't be any other way, because people are po polarized on one side or another, and they haven't learned to get in the middle and stand in the middle in the balance point. A spiritual warrior has to stand in the middle of the conflict and still find that peace and that centeredness within him or herself. That's just the nature of the spiritual warrior. The spiritual warrior is not one who stands firmly on one side and fights the other side or denigrates it or puts it down or denies it 
Now, the spiritual warrior tries to reconcile the opposites within him or herself. That's what the paradox man does. And I believe that's what the, the dragon family is learning to do. I give it space to prove itself to me and to us. I give it space because I've prayed for a long time that people that are in control of the world's wealth, because frankly, the people that control the world's wealth are people that control the flow of information in the world. They are people that can influence the rise and fall of human consciousness to some degree. And so I've prayed for people at high levels to be enlightened, to be opened up. And when I see a Buddhist man teaching evangelical, fundamentalist, charismatic Christianity, and teaching us tools of spiritual warfare, I both applaud and pause. For him, it's a thing in the process. For me, in some areas, I've gone beyond that process. Or have I? See, all of it creates self-examination. And that's what I encourage each of you to do. Examine yourself. A spiritual warrior is one that integrates opposites. A spiritual warrior is one that can stand in the battle and still find the place within themselves that recognizes that it is connected to everything, that everything out there is part of me because I am the microcosm of the macrocosm even if I don't recognize certain aspects of myself, even if I'm unaware, unconscious of certain things that are reality for me, even if I'm only viewing with limited consciousness, I recognize that I am more than what I now know, than what I can now perceive. And so spiritual warfare is about gifts of the spirit. It's about recognizing that the physical has to connect with the spiritual, the visible with the invisible. Because without that, without spiritual warriors coming into our fullness, the planet will be destroyed. Humanity will be lost. That's where I find myself. And I applaud the Red Dragon. I applaud the Ambassador. I applaud those that I haven't met yet that are part of the family, those around the world who are waking up and recognizing that we're in this together and that this web of life that connects us all is calling us to a place of winning a battle and finding peace. The battle is integration versus separation. Ignorance is on the side of the separation. Which side are you on? Thank you for listening. Namaste.